Well, with me now is Nash Shah, the uh, Labour MP for Bradford West and the Vice Chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Social Integration. So uh, let's talk about it all. Very good to see you, Nash Shah. I mean, you worked extensively in the community in Bradford before you were uh, elected. Do you recognise the, the Bradford that Louise Casey describes? Absolutely. There's lots in Louise Casey's report which I very much welcome. Um, in terms of there's pockets of patriarchal communities, uh, patriarchal cultures, various uh, segregation. Um, there's not the, 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 the wrong thing would be to dismiss Louise Casey's report. Yeah. I think it's very welcome. It's a conversation that we need to have nationally. Um, however, I do have some concerns uh, about the report, and those are that we, I feel we've really missed an opportunity. And when we're talking about integration, what we've missed here is here is a report when we've had, which, and Louise rightfully touches on uh, the issues around uh, white working class people not having, uh, not having the same opportunities to get to university, etc. But actually, we've not talked about, we've talked about extremism and, and, and that debate about extremism and Muslims, but we've not talked about, especially in the era post the murder of my colleague Joe Cox. We've not touched on that. And I think that's been a real missed opportunity uh, because integration is a two-way street and it's not, it's not just about... What about those communities that we have left behind, not just the Muslim communities? So, I mean, do you think... I mean, are you saying fear's a, a factor? That's why a community would bond together? I mean, you, you I, say I, the far right have been left out of this. I think, I think the, uh, the conversation about extremism around the far right, the rise of the far right, about communities feeling out of touch, the working white working class communities, we've missed that conversation in this report. I also feel, whilst it makes very valid recommendations and absolutely the government should be implementing them, it doesn't give, a, it doesn't give us the solutions and the narrative to actually take them conversations further. Um, for me, the, the, the post, especially no, to have no mention of one of the most significant uh, things that has happened, a white supremacist meet, uh, murders a British MP on our streets of Great Britain, and yet it doesn't get a fleet in mention. I found very okay. disheartened by that. So that's one of the misses on, on your book. What about poverty? I mean, of course, Louise Casey deals with the issue, but I mean, is that could that be the, the deciding factor? I mean, you know, she does describe, you know, the levels of unemployment within some of these communities much higher than the, the, the general rate and things like that. I think, um, if you look at the uh, Twitter handles today on this report, if you look at what people are saying out there, the op-eds that have been put out there, there is a huge correlation, and Louise rightfully points it out in her report, in terms of poverty. So 25% of the Muslim community live in 10% of those most deprived wards and poverty and integration go hand in hand so the issue of integration doesn't affect the middle classes it doesn't affect so the class issue hasn't been talked about and when we go back to it ultimately is this a real deflection of government austerity policies because where does the austerity fall it falls on those that need more support that need interventions that need that infrastructure support and Bradford West where I come from my constituency fourth most deprived constituency in the whole UK. You know, that, those statistics, and if you look at integration, education attainments, when we invited Louise, uh, we invited Louise to Bradford, and I spent the whole day introducing her to, you know, the Bradford Literature Festival. I took her to the mosque, the Madrasa, mm. um, Al-Merkas. We had lots of, we had a really engaging discussion. And it started from the premise of education. And I'm not convinced that, that ah, this report reflects Well, that's that. what I wanted to throw in there, because, OK, we've got the poverty angle here, but does poverty impact upon the the cultural thing, the misogyny, the patriarchy, the, the plight of some women in these communities, not leaving the home, it seems, very often, not even learning English. I think absolutely, we, Louise is absolutely right in wanting the ESOL budget back. That, that shouldn't have been cut in the first place. I think it's absolutely right that we need to concentrate on education. And I think it's absolutely right that we do have misogyny, we do have patriarchy in communities, in cultures. But that is not exclusive just to Pakistani Muslim communities. And what this report also misses is we have... The, the, the concentration of this report is on Muslims of Bangladeshi and Pakistani heritage. Yet, we those Bangladeshi and Pakistani communities only make up less than 50% of a Muslim community in this country. So what about the rest of those communities? What about the black communities? What about the Irish experience? What about the Scottish experience? We've not got that. So should this report have been, if we're talking about a wider integration report, or should we be talk, calling this report a Pakistani and Bangladeshi report? Because that doesn't even cover, cover so all the Muslim population. Absolutely. Comprehensive report. Okay, Nash Shah, very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed for your views.